You realize if I take the soil out and move this and use the soil in here in another tote later in the spring, I'm going to end up with tons of red roselle growing. And I'll step back and go, what the heck are those growing in there from? Where have they come from? Well, that could be a good thing. Do you know what that is? That is our carpenter bees that have moved in. Look at him. He is working the garden early in the morning. Oh, okay. And you know, we have found them so docile and so, oh, he's gonna go into my squat. Look at him. They've got a yellow nose. Oh, I, let me introduce myself. Hi, it's Robbie from Southern California. And I was getting ready to start the mid-November garden tour. And I got fascinated because when I stepped out here with my camera, our carpenter bee was here. Yes, early on we thought it was a bumblebee. Let me walk down here, I'm gonna start it here and I'll explain it. It's interesting, I did not see him go into, right now, I did not see the carpenter bee go into any of my squash flowers that are blooming everywhere, but I have seen him before. So today he was looking for something else and he actually was in cell thistle. That's the same one that the goldfinches love. We originally thought they were bumblebees because of the behavior. Behavior is very, very different on those bees. They're supposed to be completely solitary and yet there's a commune living here. So I can't explain that, but you know what? Animals have evolved over the years to change and work out something that works better for them. So did they do that? Did they hitch a ride here? They still say that they're from Texas but somehow they got here. I don't know how they found their yard, but Gary loves them. You know why Gary loves them so much? Because the sad part about bumblebees is they have a very, very short life. The research we've done. Once the season's over, they all die off. There's a queen that stays alive and hibernates and, and then lays eggs and then apparently she dies off after the babies come out. But with carpenter bees, they're a little bit more from what we understand like honeybees. They can live for quite some time, so they can get to know you. So it's worked out good for Gary. He loves his bees. Here's the truck bed. As you can see, I have not gotten to it. All the Swiss chard will be probably trimmed down very soon. And I'm gonna be what I'm doing. I'm gonna load them all into the buckets. There's a tomato plant growing. And then I'm gonna line this with buckets. I'm going to do this slowly over winter. I really haven't done all that much because I'm working right now on the deck in other places. And I don't wanna to try to, well, I don't wanna burn myself out at a time that I'm not gonna grow as much as I will grow in the spring. So why not just keep going? And I've got all this Swiss chard. They may be small, the leaves off the older plant, but let me tell you something. They are fantastic to cook and eat, so it doesn't matter size, doesn't matter. And then I've got a squash plant back there that's got a lot of flowers. You can see it back there. So all in all, this is doing really good for something that I'm not doing anything with. And I've been removing the last of the tomatillos. Actually, this plant is still green. The one on my deck is not. So I've been taking these off and I wash them. Well, I take off the skin. See, this is a purple one. I wash them and then I put it, dry them, and then I put them in bags in the freezer so I can have them all winter if I want to make salsa. Nothing new there, so no use really going over and seeing anything yet. The sun is just coming up and I'm trying to rush through. Need to get a fountain in here, a solar fountain, and then those will be running once the sun is stronger. It's just lifting in the sky, so a lot of times they won't really do anything yet. So this hasn't been changed. Gary put some cactus up there. I'm not sure if you can see that. A while back he put some cactus, that will keep things out. So it's worked out pretty good. All right, so the sugar cane, the black sugar cane is dying back. There's a little bit of rosemary back there I planted. And then the whole wall here, it's still growing as you can see. I've got, I have been picking cucumbers. I've picked some cucumbers. Oh, there's that bee again. And I've picked uh, tomatoes. There's squash trying to make a comeback, very strange. So we'll see what happens. I just saw him and he is going in here, Gary's bee. I shouldn't be doing this because a lot of you probably don't care. I am not sure he might be in here. I just saw him. Oh, there he is. They are very docile bees. What they're called is their common name. I'm not gonna try the Latin name is horsefly-like, one word, horsefly, like 
carpenter bee. They have a little bit of fuzz on them, so they do resemble, let's say, a type of bumblebee. And they don't bother me. You saw him come up to me in the beginning to check me out, and that's what they do. But I find them quite nice. Chair garden, I didn't do anything last year, and yet I got food out of it. Nothing was done. This year, as soon as, well, I shouldn't say this year, after the holidays, I'm going to come through here, and I'm going to start to eliminate what I don't want. So I'm going to probably keep the peppers and fix that up, and of course the lettuce. Then the lettuce here, I mean, I'm, it's self-planting. This I want out. I don't need tons of celery. This is all celery seed here. And this is why celery grows everywhere. Because it's just so fine, it can blow everywhere and it gets everywhere. This is a papalo and this one grew all last year. So we'll see if it makes it through the winter. It looks like it's kind of end up dying back, but it's over a year old. This is another papalo back here. And then I've got more lettuce and there's some sort of collard or kale back there. It could be broccoli. I don't know why I've got a basket over that. And then that's a really, really nice brassica back there. I'll probably keep that. So I'm going to go through each one of these totes and clean them up. And then I'll decide what I'm going to keep and what I'm not going to keep. And then I'm going to go for it. Like here, there was nothing in here. Now, the walking onions are having a problem in here. I'm going to show you this. I can see this because of all the celery. This is celery that's growing in here. Let me see if I can grab some to show you. And they get a massive root system. So I think they're pulling from the walking onions. So for, for now, the walking onions are fine. I've got tons of them. But you can't really mix celery with a lot of stuff because the root system is so big. Here's the south thistle. That's what the bee was feeding on, and that's what the goldfinches feed on all the time. The goldfinches, see, even the honeybees come in. Everybody loves south thistle. That's just a plain old honeybee. South thistle is a, I don't know if it's really native, but it is one of our wild weeds. Don't know if it really came from here or was brought in, but everything feeds on that. Your, all your birds feed on it, the seeds, and then of course your bees feed on the flowers, and then of course people, that's why I wonder if it was brought in, eat the greens. Of course they found other things that taste better, so they're kind of phased out over the years. All right, so let's walk down here, and you probably want to see the trees. I'm going to trim them back. I think I said that last time. I haven't done it yet. My sage in that tote is doing really good, but the apple trees, I want to trim them, and maybe I'll start putting in better trees. Oh my goodness, do you see this? Let me see if you can see this. Let me see if you can see, I don't know if you can see. There are so many birds up there. We've got a hawk. There's the cooper hawk sitting there. He's the one that, he or she nests in this tree next to me. And then you've got all these doves. Let me back up a little bit. You got doves there. I think I saw a house finch a minute ago. All these birds sitting with that hawk. Obviously, they're not threatened in any way. Look at this. I think they're waiting for me to go in because I now have dozens of doves. Look at them coming in. They go over to the garden over there and they feed in the garden. So they might be saying, hey, finish up what you're doing so we can go. Isn't that funny? Oh my goodness, you know when I started feeding birds just a few years ago, really heavy like this, there were very few doves. And now I seem to have a ton of them. All right, let's not waste your time and let's keep going. All right, so the wall, like I said, is just old plants. I may or may not move the papaya that's there. The sun is coming up, it's gonna be hot. We have had a heat wave going on for four days now. Today I think will be the fifth. It has been so hot. So that is, a, let's see if you can see that. That's the papaya there. I'm probably going to move that whole thing. I don't want it, so it's either compost it or move it, but I'm going to lift it out. Oh gosh, those carpenter. See, these carpenter bees live in a big community. I don't know if you can see. Oh, it's going to go in my squash. No, he chipped out the flower and it wasn't what he wanted. And maybe it was that flower he doesn't want. And they're all over my garden, so that's why Gary really likes them. But anyways, I'm going to move the papaya probably. If not, I'll compost it. Oh, so one carpenter bee went that way, and there's another one in here. Very, very interesting. Is he going into the flower? We don't want to surprise him. I don't know where he went, but I just saw him. So they're all over the yard. I don't know where they came from. We've never had these before, and we did a whole video. We've done three videos on them. 
And I'm wondering if they hitched a ride in. All they would have had been is they are in Mexico and Texas in some wood that was brought over. And somebody didn't know, you only need one. And they built a big community, a big colony here. So it's very strange. All right, that's enough with the carpenter bees. So my moringa has lost all its leaves, which is okay. Now we got more pods and more seeds. I'm going to set up the totes hopefully in the spring all through here and get things going, even if it's just potatoes. If, if I'm not using things, I have to at least get potatoes going because I want more potatoes. Tomatoes are kind of dying back. I don't know if the plant will make it for the winter or if I'll start over. The tomatillos, look at this, been picking and picking. We have a lot of tomatillos. And then the squash has been making a comeback. There's one there and there's one there. I like the triple setup, so I'm not sure, you know, with the three on the bottom and the two on the top. I'll probably set a few more up like that. There's good and there's bad on that. When you stack them like that, see the middle one doesn't get a lot of sunlight, so it kind of gets blocked. So you want to put something in there that may get a little more shade. I had a squash, but something got in there and ate it, and I think it was a squirrel. That's why I put the wire there. Here, I haven't done anything yet as far as new, but I threw, I composted some squash seeds in there, so that's growing. That's celery. I want to move this container. Been taking soil from that tote because it's got great soil, so I've been moving the soil. Here is a tomato plant that I definitely have to stake up, and then I've got some Malabar spinach growing in there, and there is a squash here. Now, this I've got to harvest. Oh, something got in there and moved it around. Oh, no, it's from watering yesterday. See what this is? It's potatoes. I'm getting this out today. Okay, that's still stuck on the plant. We can pull it for a minute, but I want to really get in here. And... Okay, I, I pulled off. The potatoes are inside. There's one green one left, but I'm going to tip that bucket. See, it's all planted in a bucket. Oh, I've got zucchini down there. That's a little dry, but I've been picking squash like mad through here. It's been fantastic. Fantastic. Just amazing. I can have so much zucchini in the, in the middle of November. So I'm going to pick the potatoes, and I want to get more potatoes growing. Again, that's the papayas you saw early in the spring that were little. This can lift, so it's just where I'm going to put it, because I want to compost in here. See, this will come out. So I'm just going to find a different place for it. And all this squash is coming up in here. We've got a lot of powdery mildew. I don't worry about powdery mildew. It doesn't seem to hurt the plant any. The plants continue to have squash and stuff. But the problem was, like I said, we've been in a heat wave for four days. And before that, we were cold. And every morning, it was so foggy, it, you were walking through it like rain. It was that thick. So that was all over the plants. And it created a oh jeez. And created a lot of powdery mildew. So we've got a squash here that's still attached. I'll get that off later. I want to leave it on the plant so the skin stays soft. Here is cucumbers starting. I've been picking cucumbers again. Very strange. A lot of it has powdery mildew. I, what I usually do, and I haven't done it in the past few days, is come back through here and remove the dead leaves and take off the leaves that have powdery mildew. And then I'll get a lot of new growth. More squash in there, more, this is yellow squash, yellow zucchini, and I've been getting a lot of yellow zucchini. You can see how nice that is. Isn't that cool? Isn't that beautiful? I've been getting a lot of yellow zucchini. All right, purple tree collar. Let's just walk through here. Eggplant, lots of peppers. I better get those peppers off because I see the pepper plant is struggling. I've been picking peppers. There's peppers here, here. This one got sunburned, see, with all the heat. So that one's okay. I just pull it off and use the other half that's not sunburned. Nothing here. Everything is the same. Still getting tomatoes. I will groom this when I get a chance and come through here and groom it all back really good. And we'll see what makes it. That's the old Goliath tomato from my daughter over a year ago. There's uh, green sorrow. Here is leeks growing that I planted. That's walking onions down there, but this is leeks. And I've got some lettuce in here, which has been really nice, but these are leeks. And then again, more Goliath tomatoes. I want to redo the strawberries. Now this is the lettuce. I cover it with tulle. See, I just poured some water over it and it must have leaves. See, but isn't this cool? By covering it, I have nothing to get to it. If you uncover it, like that one got a little uncovered, something got in there and ate one of my lettuce. Look at that. See, it's open, and you don't want to open it. 
So now, probably a worm or something, could have been a grasshopper, got in there and ate it. These are okay, and these are going to seed. So if I want the seeds, I should uncover it and let it do its thing and collect the seed. I probably will do that, because I really do want the seed since I threw it there last time from one of these, and now I've got a whole bunch growing there. Garlic chives, celery, see I have a ton of celery. Oh, this is new. Some of these are new, they're off the deck. Those are the upside down planters that they don't make anymore. I think if you go back and watch a deck one, you'll see it sways. You've got to figure out which way it's swaying. So you put it up against the wall because if you don't, it will continue to lean, lean, lean and go over. So I moved them off my deck. I didn't know where to put them and I told Gary, go ahead and put them here because nobody can get them anymore. They were, I've told the story. I got them for like $2.50. I asked my friend the other day, what, didn't I pay $2.50? He goes, yeah, it was like nothing. He gave me his because he didn't want them. They were falling over. See, I've got the other three from the deck over there. And they were like $66, I think, at Sam's Club. And then Walmart had them for $50-something. And other people had them for $80. And then when they sold out in the store, everybody wanted them because they look so neat. But there's really nothing to grow in. I mean, there's no room. And so I saw them online for up to $150. Can you imagine? I'm going to make some. They'll probably, if you want to get really fancy, eh, maybe it's going to cost you 20 bucks. If you don't want to get fancy, you can make it for next to nothing. So I'm going to be making my own. But I moved them out here because, I mean, to be honest, I don't want to throw them away. I bought them, so there's no use in throwing them away because I don't want you to see them. So I am going to put them out here, but we're going to make something better. The base holds water. See how that cap is almost off? You have to have water in the base because that's the weight that is counteracting that. And so you need water in there and you need to keep that cap on. If the cap comes off, you'll end up with mosquitoes. And worst of all, I may have an open container with water, but if I see anything, I can tip it. You can't tip it. You would have to take the whole thing apart on these upside down planters. The legs have to come out you would have to tip it out and make sure you get it all. So it can be a pain unless you want to pour a little bleach or vinegar or something in there and then recap it and hope you kill them all. When you have an open container, you see it, you dump it. I dump that all the time and dump it back. So that's what's going on there. And like I said, nothing's changed here. Even last year, I really didn't plant a lot here because what I did last year is I let a lot of the stuff that was already growing keep growing. And it did a good job. Or tomatoes that reseed themselves. That works really, really good. So that's what's going on here. Now let's go in the front yard because I really don't want to waste anybody's time because there isn't anything new, but I'm just kind of letting you know on things I'm going to do and change. Going back and looking at all of this, I'm going to say nothing else is going to change but little things. Not moving anything out. You do know that I could change my mind tomorrow. But no, I don't plan on it. Uh, right now, I think I'm going to leave all of this just the way it is, and then as spring comes in, go through all the containers and replant what I want in these things. If they're doing really good, walking onions are doing good, celery is doing really good, that's actually parsley up there. Eggplant, a lot of times eggplant I have found here does better in the second year than the first year. Just redo the tote. When I say redo it, load it up with leaves and some good compost on the top either from an empty tote that's not growing too much like an avocado tree that should come out um, then just cover the top and let it do its thing and that's refurbishing to me there but there's carrots in here so the care oh something knocked this over this covers my basil and my basil will grow all winter as long as I have a little shield around it keeps the trunk of the plant really good even in cold weather keeps it warm like a little greenhouse and I'll have basil growing in the winter even when it's cold. This is all carrots. So I can move it, just falling from the carrot seeds, or I can just leave it, but I'll probably move some, I don't know. I haven't decided. It wasn't plant, it planted itself. It's not gonna grow good that way because they're too, it's too overcrowded. Walking onions, see, look at this, an old bird cage with a container, and keep in mind all containers have holes. There's holes in here, and now look at this. Now see how much nicer this is growing compared to the one in my chair garden? There's no competition. There's one celery here and one celery there. And technically, I should remove the celery, give the celery its own pot, and then the walking onions will, will be even happier. But celery gets a great big, think of celery root, a big root system, and it will draw from all the other plants. So don't overdo on celery. Let's go in the front yard. 
I just got bit by this tree. This, this uh, finger lime, and we've been using the finger limes down there. The thorns on this is unreal. I don't know if you can see the thorns. The thorns, look at this. Is, can you see that, how sharp it is? A wonderful, wonderful plant. If you can grow citrus, and it's growing in a pot, so you can grow it almost anywhere and bring it in for the winter. You cut these open, and it's got these little inside like little balls of juice inside and you suck it out or you bite it out and they pop in your mouth. Look at that, isn't that gorgeous back there? You gotta be careful because it is sharp. And it's lime and it's so good. I can't believe how good it is. All right, so not much in there. I've got some tomatoes back there. The squash is trying to do its thing. And well, that's basically it. There's some more squash. Like I said, I'm not gonna do anything yet until spring because I have more than enough food. This is the geranium that just grew like a monster. I don't even want it here. But I feed it the compost tea in here and it grew. See all those wonderful gold leaves? That's my soil. And I'll have to make sure I collect this because every leaf is soil. And I collect every leaf that I can because it's gonna make my compost. All right, sweet potato for my daughter. She got me some fancy purple sweet potato. I'll dig that up later, but it's going real good, so I'm not going to do anything. And then more squash. Nothing really here. The tomatoes, there's some tomatoes left. We had so many tomatoes, we didn't even pick them all. So they're reseeding themselves. Here is, oh, this is going to have to be taken out. See, this is a big old tree collard, and it's just too top heavy. So I'll probably redo a lot of that and make good soil, take off the greens that I want, do some cuttings off of that and redo this later, nothing now. And then I've got all the walking onions on the bottom here. And then here, it's kind of skimpy, but my tomatoes are still growing here. Let me back up over here. Isn't that cool? So I've been picking tomatoes. I will redo that later too. These tomatoes were volunteers, they came up. I think I might have moved one from over here. There was a teeny, teeny, teeny one. And I think I moved one early on but some of them came up on their own. I think there's a few tomato plants growing in there. We did really, really well with tomatoes here. I think it looks cool. It's just sitting on a stump. One of these horse troughs, you can get them at Walmart for like five bucks, you can probably get them anywhere. And it's done really good. And the holes, as you can see, are not on the bottom. So it retains a lot of water here in Southern California. You wouldn't do that if you've got a lot of rain because then it could get too wet. Tomatoes don't want to be in water. But here where it's so dry, it worked perfect. Same thing there, these are just, this came with the house, these wooden things. They're actually covering something up there, I think. And then those plants were there, the succulent plants, but I put a tote in the middle. And there I've got a collard, a tree collard growing, and I believe there's a broccoli plant there. So that's basically it. You know what, let me step over here. This might be easier, and then I'll go straight into the yard. Look at that, we have a different view. There's my ginger, turmeric, and stevia growing in the back. See the flowers back there? Right, let me see if I can get my finger there. Right there, you can't see it. Right there, that's my stevia there. Right there, that's my stevia. I've got stevia growing in there in the back, and then you can see the ginger and turmeric. They're growing in buckets, they're growing in flower pots, they're growing in floral pots, whatever I can get, and I even have some growing in a tote. They're not quite ready for harvest. I could harvest them right now, but I wanna store a lot of them so I can put them out at the end of spring because they like it warm. Want to freeze some to have for food. And then of course I want to eat some. So it's getting close. I never really plant in, in the rest of these pots and I should have because they're bending up the pots. They really grew really good here. They like it because, I'm not gonna turn you around because you'll see the sun, but you'll get an idea. The sun is coming through the pine trees. It must be about 7.30 right now. It'll get morning sun and then in the afternoon, it, the sun drops on the other, other side of the house here, and so it doesn't get the late afternoon hot sun, and that's what here in Southern California, the ginger and the turmeric and the stevia like. I have found that here on my property, everybody's is different, stevia does not like full sun. I've lost it in the past when it said plant in full sun, watered the dickens out of it, and it still died. Put it here where it gets morning sun only in Southern California and it grew like a weed. So it's done really, really well. It might make it all winter, but I've got some stevia that will probably make it all winter on the deck. So I don't know if it's gonna make it all winter here. This is all gonna die back. See how the leaves are starting to turn brown and the coloring is yellow and there's not a lot of new growth. Well, our nights are changing. 
four days of a heat wave where it's getting the low has been 60 is good, but next week we could drop into the upper 40s because they're already talking about a weather change, which is normal since we'll be going into winter in a month. So once it gets cold, ginger and turmeric doesn't like it. Dies back, it pulls all the old growth off, so that all dies back and it pulls all the nutrients into the rhizomes, which is why I want it to die back before I harvest it. But of course, if you were gonna cook with it or do anything with it, you could right away use it now. That's called green ginger and that's perfect. And in the blue buckets, I've got two blue buckets and one black one right there in this corner here. That's the black turmeric. Still don't know what I'm gonna do with it, but it's growing really good. And then here, Gary picked up an olive tree, I think at Home Depot. And then there, there was a couple great plants they had and they were real cheap. They were getting rid of them because they die back this time of the year. So he figured he'd grab those. I may put one in my garden, in my bird garden, and then he might put the other one in his garden. I think he's got grapes down there now. All right, let's walk out of here. So we've already done that, so I don't have to go there. We can go straight into the bird garden. And then we can kind of wrap this thing up so I don't have to walk through and really show you a whole lot because, well, I didn't do a whole lot. Oh, here, there's the plumbing thing. Pipe was leaking, didn't like burst, but it was leaking. And so we had to have Mike Diamond. Oh, my girlfriend called, she had a plumber. She said that was reasonable and all that. Here's the problem, he was up in Mammoth, she told me and that he'll be home soon. I, we needed to get it done now. And at least with Mike Diamond, I've had very, very good luck with Mike Diamond, is that when they come, you call them, they come, and they did a great job. It took two days to do all the plumbing. They dug it out. Gary was gonna do it, but I said, don't, don't. Let, him, let them do it, they bring the welding, and it's all been done, and now the water has all been redone here. So that's the thing, and that's why I like Mike Diamond. They're, They've been very, to me, reasonable. They may be high on some stuff, but the good thing is when you need a plumber, they usually come out that day or within a day. A lot of times other places, they're so busy, they say it'll be days and sometimes you can't wait days. Gonna go back and refurbish here and gonna go through because some of the onions are really small. Actually, they're still doing really good. So I'll go back later on and redo this. I won't have to take the tool down. I think this tool will last a good two or three years. I have the old tool underneath. You could probably see it. It was black and it faded. And yet it's still in good shape. I just threw a new you know, thing, a tool on here, and it's kept everything out. So I'm gonna redo that later in the spring. I don't have to do it now. And then, like I said, we've already done this. So we can go straight into the bird garden. There's the ginger up close. And see, it is dying back. And if you look, there's really no new growth. That's it, it's stopped. You'll see all these new leaves, like you'll, they'll look like this, and you'd see all the new leaves, but they're starting to slow down. Even the new leaves are coming in, they're kind of yellow. Well, as soon as it gets cold, it's done. It goes dormant, it goes in the hibernation, and that's the way it's supposed to be. And then of course you can grow it in totes. And remember, I'm also growing the skin. If you wanna know how to grow the skin, go back and check out that video because a lot of these small pieces in here are from the skin. I just put the skin in there that I rooted and then they grew in there. So I needed more room and I still need more room. See what they've done to the pots? Oi. <laughs> See how what they've done? They're so packed that they're all bent up because they didn't get to a lot of them last year. I have to go through each and every one and put one or two rhizomes in them because they, they just took off. So I've got a ton of it. There's the bird garden. Hear the birds singing? I don't know if you can. You probably can't. That's why I don't like a mic. I'm wearing a mic right now. But the birds just are singing. So there's those doves you saw. Let's see if we can see that. They're way up there. I don't know if you can see them, but they're up there. They're waiting for me to be done so they can come out here and do their thing. So let's go in here. And this is where my bird garden is. This I want to do changes in. I don't want to overchange them because that will upset the birds. But it's just so pretty. Look how green it is. Look at this tree color that just took off. We just ate the last watermelon I picked out of here. Now I've got, of course, papaya, which I don't want. And then I've got more squash. Looks like the birds have been nibbling on it. And then I've got back there, this is all Malabar spinach that's green here. Isn't this beautiful? This is all Malabar spinach. What else is back here? I've got. 
You can't get to the corner, but way back in the corner is oregano. Here is broccoli. Oh, you know who wants broccoli. I'll bring it in for her. Here's broccoli. So I've got broccoli growing back there. See all the broccoli all through here? So I've got broccoli growing here. And then there is the purple tree collard I got off of eBay. It's, it was too thin, the trunk. I saw it right away, but yet it's grown really, really good. And it goes over the backside here. It's leaned on here. And eventually I'll take a lot of that off and I'll do tons of cuttings, but I don't, I've done cuttings, so it's not like I'm short on cuttings. I am not. Still collecting soil and leaves from around the yard. A lot of this, if you look at it, you can't even tell, was leaves that started to break down, so it's already turning in the soil, just sitting in a bucket. Then, of course, here, let me turn around here. Like I said, it's a mess because I'm pulling things everywhere. This is going really, really good. These are those old, old totes. What are they now? Four, five years old, five years old. And look, a walking onion on the floor, on the ground. It fell at a set root. That's what it should do, but a lot of times it doesn't. This is just old dinosaur kale cuttings and chocolate mint, I believe this one is. Yes, and then lemon verbena. The lemon verbena will probably go dormant soon, as soon as the weather changes. So I'm starting to go through all this and change a lot of this. Most of the dragon fruit has been pulled off. I don't think there's any left here. I don't see any. That doesn't mean they're all off, but we've been eating them. We've had a lot of dragon fruit. This is in the ground. This was in a pot. And this is in the ground now. See right there in the ground? And then this. Got some walking onions in here. Oh, there come the earthworms. That's what I always say. Right there. Are the earthworms? Right there. All you have to do to find earthworms is just have a flower pot sitting somewhere on the ground and then go back and grab a handful of the damp soil. That's all you need to do. And then just throw it in something you're growing and you'll have worms. Even if you don't see them, they're probably there anyways. And that's how I get my earthworms when I need them. Just go grab some damp soil if they don't find their way in on their own. But this is in the ground and it's gonna need shaping or it's gonna fall over. Then I've got some in pots. I wanna drop this in the ground. Let me make sure I'm far back enough. It's hard to see. Okay, there we go. And then here I'm changing things around. I put, had Gary bring the stumps over. That's how we found those carpenter bees. I wanted some stumps to put my water feature, but it's still in the shade. So they're just starting. There's That one's burping back there. So that worked out really good. The birds have been using this all the time. And then this is those new planters I'm making. Oh, I'm gonna spot my garden with these everywhere. This has been just sitting there and just for weeks and weeks now, and it's doing fantastic. And look at my zinnias. The hummingbirds feed on them. Uh, it's just beautiful. I've seen bees on them. It's just wonderful. So I'm gonna clean this up so I can sit here and do some photographs of birds. Oh, there's a hummingbird. Oh, I hope you can see him. You probably can't. He's come to say hello. He's just watching me. Let me back up to around there. And so anyways, I want to be able to check out the birds more, but this is not clean yet. I want to clean up the solar panels. I like the way I did the solar panel back there. It's just on that pole. And I want to change them around where you kind of make them disappear. But I want them within reach in case I have to wipe my hand over them if they get dusty or full of bird poop or something. So they'll run really good. And then a lot of these, some of them don't even have solar fountains to attach them because I put something else. So I want to change that around. And then I want to move my roses. This is the roses that there's no thorns on it. I'm probably going to move it back there. So I don't know yet. So there's no use in telling you what I'm going to do when I don't know what I'm going to do yet. So we'll see what happens here. So let's just do a walk through here because really pretty much nothing has changed. Everything you see that looks so green now, look how beautiful and green it looks. I know the sun is in your face because it's in mine. This is just because we are not in the middle of summer. Everything is coming back on its own. This is the way it's going to be all winter. It's going to get greener and greener. And then I can step back and decide how or where I want to plant things. This is wonderful. This is the plant that came up on its own. And this is such a beautiful plant. So I want to get a lot of cuttings off of that. Look at the leaves. Isn't that beautiful? Absolutely gorgeous. I'm going to do a lot of cuttings off of this one and get a lot of this plant going for cooking and eating and green drinks and everything because it's so deep green. And I do believe, I've told you a thousand times, I had an old collard there and I believe it crossed three times and I believe it's part of a purple, 
a dazzling blue kale. I believe it's part of a collard and dinosaur kale. That's my guess on it. All right, so we've got the fountains. The sun is coming up. Let's keep going and wrap this thing up because I haven't done anything here. I'm still debating if I'm going to move this old bird cage on the other side of the yard. See, I've got some kale I put. That's purple tree collard, I should say, back there. I want to get rid of this. And those that have been growing in there, seeds blew in there and grew some brassicas. I want to get those in the ground, too. Look at this. This is just the cutting I put in here. A little cutting from a purple tree collard. Look at the size of it. And that, too, is going to outgrow. There's a 4 o'clock flower down there. Because we have 4 o'clocks that grow there and the seeds blew in there. So anyways, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with this. I may end up leaving it here, but I definitely want to put chairs and totes here. Probably going to use the brown chairs. I don't have to paint them. Came from the thrift store. Sit them kind of in a way where they're easy to maintain and take care of. Look at the moringa growing. And then back here, just so you can see this, what I'm doing. See that back there? You probably can't see it good. That's cuttings, and I see green on there. See the little bit of green? There were stems from a, I think it was a red hibiscus plant. So I root them while I'm growing other things, and it works out really good. Double duty and less work. So anyways, I'm going to see how I'm going to put it in here, but I'll set that up you know, a little bit over winter, get things the way I want. And then this has to be put in the ground. This is another cutting that was in a pot of a purple tree colored. And like I said, all leaves are important. Let's go out to the rainbow garden. Yes, I've been picking tomatoes. You know, I see signs of a hornworm, but I don't see the hornworm. It could be old signs, too. All right, let's step out into the rainbow garden. Citrus trees are doing really, really well. And those doves are sitting up there still, waiting to see when I'm leaving. And then they come in and they just go through all the plant food, all the food for the uh, birds. They just wipe everything clean. I'm gonna do something different with the strawberries. Oh, look at this, the strawberries are trying to make a comeback. And then that will be later. And then this is the potato mint. I'm waiting for it to die back. Once it dies back, then I wanna see how much is in there and get more of that growing. Those are the ones, it's in the mint family, family and they grow little tiny potatoes that taste exactly like potatoes. You treat them like potatoes, but the difference is you can't eat them raw. So you could slice them up if you like the taste and put them in a salad or something. Saute them, make potato salad, whatever you want with them. Nothing's done here. I haven't done anything here. This is still my two system. I haven't even looked in that in a week or two. Oh yeah, it's full of earthworms. See the earthworms? I'll have to put some more leaves in there soon. Gently set that back. These are really good to set around in your containers. I'm gonna get more into that and I'll tell you how it can be very, very beneficial for you in the spring when you start setting things up. So that is it, we've made our circle. My pepinos are growing, doing quite well. Look at that, which is nice because I don't have to touch this toad at all. Oh, I still have a couple more. See, I don't think they're gonna make it. It's still trying to grow melons, but it's so much <laughs> past its season that I don't know, I'll leave them because it's still green. It would be nice if it makes it, but I don't know if it will. And then this is all broccoli. I've got a lot of broccoli, and yes, Kitty, my Yorkie, has been getting tons of broccoli. See all the broccoli on the top? That is all broccoli. See all that? That is really cool. So I've had a lot of broccoli this year. We've had a lot of mustard, purple mustard. This is another two system. This really is too big for here. I like something smaller, but it works. Oh, more pepinos, I didn't even see that. And then, oh, see, it's still throwing flowers. And then the pepper plant's doing really good. I just have to go through and clean this. This is celery. So this is okay, because I mainly have celery, and then I've got garlic in the pack there. That's garlic in the bucket. And then there is some walking onions there, but it's a big enough tote that it's only got the one big celery, so it works out really good. These are seeds, and this is coming off the broccoli, and this is asparagus. They say you cannot grow asparagus in a container, and that's when I wanna see what happens in the spring when it starts to come back, will I get asparagus? That will be year two, I think, if it comes back in the spring. So I'm hoping I can get some asparagus off it where you can use some of it to eat. Right now you wanna leave it, let it do its thing, and then once it does its thing and it dies back, and then we'll see what happens in the spring. 
And again, this is all broccoli. I did plant a lot of broccoli this year. And these, these are the tomato plants that came up on their own and I counted, there were 100 plants. And yes, they are still growing tomatoes back there. I'm not sure if you can see the tomatoes back there, but there is still tomatoes, but this is not the way to grow. This is a cutting of a purple tree collard that I just stuck in the tote, see, down there. I've got celery that I don't know where to put. And that's just sitting in there, more celery there. These are pepper plants that I really should pull out, find a nice place for them and put them somewhere else. And then this of course is the Roselle Red. But, oh, the seats are opening. Oh, we wanna get those off. Because I do want the seeds. This is for, planted from my own seed. You collect the seeds and they grow really, really good. I'm gonna, they're a little spiky. I know I'm gonna need the cutters. I thought I would be able to show you, but I'm gonna need a cutters. I hear them falling, which means they're gonna come back here in this. Oh, there they are. Let's put it here. These are the ro red roselle seeds. And what I am gonna do, I think when I'm done with this later, is I'm gonna come through and collect a whole bunch, put them in an envelope, and then come spring, just toss them around, let them do their own thing. Or I can grow them in the house, like I did now. See, they're still in the container. Three plants I grew in the house, and I sat it in there. I cut open the bottom of the container. Oh, there's even red vein sorrel. And it grew in there all year. And we had all this roselle. Gary put it in this tea, but they're all opening. So I want to get a whole bunch of seeds. As you see, you don't need a whole bunch. You only need a couple seeds. And that's it. So I think I've done, see, there's the wall. I've done a complete spin around. Oh, my pizza garden. I have to make pizza. I haven't made pizza in a long time. I've got the sage. I think down there is a little bit of oregano. It's still tucked way down there. Here's tricolored, tricolored sage. That's growing. That's from a tiny cutting. It took off. There's walking onions back there. This is green basil, and I believe. Yep. And then I've got the purple basil growing in there. More basil on the bottom. There's a little bit of thyme back there. Should be. Then the tomato plant, and of course the peppers that have done fantastic here. So what I want to do is get peppers there, even though those peppers will have a slightly different microclimate than these peppers if I plant them in there next year. Because see, there is no tree here, so it gets full sun in the summer, where that one's gonna have the fig tree. And I do wanna keep the fig tree low, so when that is done, we'll trim it way back down. So I don't know how well the peppers will do here when I set that up. That is not set up yet. It's strictly stacked. Don't look at the ladder. I just brought that out. That was for the melons. For color-wise. I think I'm going to go color-wise that way. Unless I get some fancy green bucket because the wall is green. Got to lock them in. You've seen how I do them. They're all locked in. They're notched and locked and then they're locked with the tomato poles, the tomato stakes. So I need to get that all done and locked in over winter and then I have not made holes because I wouldn't make holes. Nope. I wouldn't make the holes until I'm ready to do it because the holes are all, it's like a waterfall. You know, I water the yellow bucket and if I only have time to water the yellow bucket, it will water everything. It will trickle out of the yellow bucket. It will trickle, this is a great vertical garden. This is probably my favorite. Holes on each side of the bucket will trickle on there and then the same thing with the red and the whole system can be watered by strictly the top if I wanted to. So that's it. So I think I've done everything here. I don't know how short we kept this, probably not short enough, but you know, this is what's going on. So as far as knocking, look at those doves, they're up, they're still waiting. She's gonna go in at some point and stop talking and we can come down. There's no reason for me to knock myself out here when I have plenty of food. I have all the food I need as far as produce if I wanna make something. I come out here if I'm gonna make omelets this morning or, or eggs or something, I can take some celery, even just here. I just grab some broccoli, celery, purple, mustard. I don't use the pepino all that much. I've got some purple uh, the kale growing in here. I've got tomatoes growing. So I've got plenty of stuff here, basil, chop it all up with some eggs and I've got breakfast. So I've got everything in this one place right here. Of course, behind me, you just saw the peppers if I wanted to add in some peppers. So for me to go and try to grow a bunch of stuff in the winter when we're going to get cold, and we are going to get cold because our coldest months are December and January. 
there's no use. So what I want to do now is take my energy and my time and go through the ones I do want, start making my compost out of stuff I don't want. I, mean, I can sit for a minute and talk. Why not? And then I'll be more prepared in the spring, maybe give it more thought. I'm not going to change anything in here. This is done. Gary built something. I don't know if I can show it. He hasn't done the video. We can walk around for a second. He's building these new things, and he built this, and then he changed the design again, I think. Don't ask. I don't know. But I actually like this. So I was going to line this up and do it differently. Last year, I was going to plant corn, and then he put this here. I don't know what's not right with it, but something wasn't right to him, and he said he was going to change it. Uh, you'd have to ask him. So he said he's going to do the video, but that's probably in the spring. And he's building something for his yard. And I said, yeah, if you don't want that, I'll take that. So that's got four totes. I actually like it. It's off the ground. I like things off the ground because of rabbits. And it does deter other animals who really would rather be on the ground. I mean, even rats, they want to be on the ground if possible. They want a place to hide. And when they have to go up, they're not sure. And then, of course, I can use tool, and that stops them totally for me. I mean, this has got tool on it right here. So I don't know what he was building, but we'll see. And then, like I said, here I'm not going to change anything, except now I like that. I'll prob I might move my strawberries in there. Again, I don't know. I like this setup. It's worked perfect. Any drawbacks? It's too sunny in the summer. I thought I was going to do a lot of crafts here, and then I thought the umbrella would be great. Yeah, but the umbrella swings, and I've had it kind of almost go over, and it's hard to do crafts here. So now I'm looking for another area that I can get my, when I say crafts, you know, stuff for the garden. And I never even got to how I make all those hummingbird holders and stuff. So I'm, I think I have another place I can do that where it can be a place where you can hear me, see better, and I've got different ideas. So that's it. I'm just sitting here. Now I'm comfortable. I can sit here and talk for an hour. <laughs> but um, I better go get some stuff done because I am working diligently on my deck. I'm very excited with the deck. That I will be working on all winter. I love the new flower containers I'm making. I literally am in love with those. I love the chairs, but the chairs and the totes have their own place. The flower pots I'm making have in their own place as well. They're totally portable. The other day I had my zinnias out there and I thought, you know what, they need more sun. I moved them into more sun and I've got zinnias that are growing on my deck. So that's the thing is they're portable and I want to try to give, oh, I see the doves are coming in. You can't see them, but they're moving. They're moving off and they're going into the trees here because they think, oh, she sat down. She may not be leaving. So we may have to go around the other side and go get all the food. They don't know me, those doves. Some of them know me and they don't care, but these are doves that are coming in watching the other doves. So I want to be able to give you ideas. I want everybody to garden something, even if it's one flower pot. Put some flowers in there and some parsley or walking onions. Walking onions are a wonderful food item to add to whatever you're eating pretty much. Okay, maybe not dessert, but anything else you can add it to. Give you ideas that will work for you. Because some of you say, oh, I have no place to garden. I only have a tiny place. Well, then use the flower pot method I've got. You don't have to bend. You can, you'll see because I've got like a hundred different ways to make it. And you can make it whatever way is going to work for you. Isn't this pretty? I know I'm wasting your time now. It's quiet. They're not even working on the house up there. I haven't seen them. Now that I think about it, in a couple weeks working. It's probably one of those things that they have to go back and have it inspected and make sure it was all done right. Oh, I spoke too soon. I hear a saw. So it's starting. Well, like I said, it was before 8 when I started this, so maybe they were waiting and some of them don't start work. But I think they probably are doing an inspection thing on that. And then once they get everything inspected or permits or maybe they change something, then they'll get back to work. But at least it's, you know, it's almost together and they're working a lot on the inside. I see birds flying all over. This is really, I am so blessed to have a place like, oh, see, the doves are coming in. To have some place especially with the tough years we've had, you know, some place to sit back. And, you know, the place you want to sit back and relax and enjoy nature can be a chair and a flower pot. You don't, bigger doesn't mean better. It could be 
just the chair and a couple of flower pots. Maybe the new flower pots I'm making because you can make them where they're so fun and so whimsical and you know just so nice. A little plane up there. You wouldn't be able to see it with this camera. I'm on my cell phone. So it doesn't it doesn't take a lot, but really walking onions, parsley. Look, you can grow a broccoli. I was trying looking at all these different plants in one pot. Even tomatoes, you can grow a small tomato plant in the new pot that I'm putting together. I'm still doing totes. I still do some troughs. I don't do too many troughs like that. I call them a trough. They're just a tub. They're really nice. I mean, that's a basil plant growing in there, and it's doing quite well. But I do happen to really like my totes. But if you don't have room, you can do these flower pots. Okay, well, now I'm going to say goodbye. See? I hear things starting. People are starting to get work done around here. I hear hammering and sawing and different things starting. So with that, I think... I have gone over my garden. I'm going to try, no promises, but let me see. I'm going to try to do a garden tour this week uh, in Gary's garden and let him just go for it and talk whatever he wants. I got him a mic. So now I can step back and don't have to run after him and chase him, put my camera near him, and I hope that it will work. So we should have an exciting garden tour in Gary's garden to see what's going on. Keep in mind, I may go down there, but I don't really know half of the stuff he's growing in there. I have so much work here that... I, by the time I go through everything else I have to do daily, work, and then do all this, I don't have time to go down and see what he's doing in his garden. And, oh, and the papayas, they're, they're doing great. The papayas are doing real good. A little skimpy on leaves this year because we haven't had any rain, but the, um, the papayas are doing really, really well. So we've had a lot of papayas. I bring that in. Even Kitty loves her papaya. And then I've got back there turning yellow already, the pomegranates. I had a lot of pomegranates, and then the ravens came through and yanked a lot of them off. So I'm going to have to tool them next time. So I've now talked your ear off. So I am going to get my stuff done and see if I can get a garden tour this week for Gary in his garden and continue on with the deck and doing other stuff like that and get some crafts together. You know what? Tell me what you're interested in right now. Are you still doing solar fountains? Are you making hummingbird feeders? Are you planting? Do you want to do seeds in the house? I got peppers growing on my windowsill. Well, I shouldn't say that yet. I have a big pepper plant. If this thing makes it, I'll tell you what I did. This is unbelievable. I have a pepper plant growing on my kitchen window with flowers. So I've got to do the bee pollination, which is wiggle it like you do tomatoes. And I'm going to see if this thing makes it. Oh, the hummingbird is here again. You can't see him, but I do. He's right by the tomatoes. Yep, he's gone. So if it makes it, I'll let you know how it made it. But right now I've got flowers, and that will be interesting to see if I can grow bell peppers or small peppers. It wouldn't be hot peppers. It should be, um, oh, it should be these. Because that's what I do. When I cut them up, I put the seeds in the flower pot, and I'm trying to thin out the ones that aren't that big and let the big one keep going. So that's it. So hopefully we'll get peppers. If it starts, I'll let you know what I did, and it's just sitting in a window, nothing fancy, in a flower pot. So with that, have a wonderful, wonderful day. And don't forget to eat what you grow. And let me go bring that broccoli in for Kitty, because I know she's waiting, and she knows I'm outside, and she wants her broccoli. Bye-bye, everybody.